quite a lot of Americans have been desperate about their own political system for years and years on end, and I, I can understand that. I mean, what can you do with, with fools like this? We have our own fool. I'm, I'm, the problem is, in the United States, you've got two parties. So when one of, one of the parties is filled up with fools, then that's very serious from a political point of view. We in the Netherlands have about 14 parties, and only two are completely filled up with fools. So then there are still 12 with slightly lesser fools, but um, that's not as serious as the American problem. But again, I think that my analysis is completely objective. And has <laughs> Well, okay, if you don't believe that, Please come here and make clear on a very factual basis without suggesting that I'm too old or whatever uh, things are wrong with my uh, physical uh, situation and make clear with a, on a factual basis where I have said things that are untrue. Anybody willing? Yeah, you are willing. Not in Iraq. I don't. I don't have said anything about success in Iraq. I, I said he ended a, a stupid adventure which was started by his predecessor. But he finished on Bush's timeline, which was December 31st, 2011, ambassadors, etc. So, regarding this fact that he actually replaced it with a very expensive embassy and finished on Bush's timeline, would you say that this is really a balanced success? The fact that he ended, that, that all American troops have disappeared, yeah, because I'm sure that if we had, uh, had had a Republican president, that would not have happened. I cannot prove that, and neither can you prove what that, that the other situation is, is the case. Let's hope that the embassy in Baghdad will shrink over time, which it will certainly do. I'm, I'm sure about that. Yeah. You start by saying that I share the same views uh, uh, with regards to America, but I think that objectively you're right. The style in which you criticize America is probably wrong because you're kind of guilty of accusing. Yeah. If they had been Republicans, they would have left all. All of them would have left by now. in the United States is actually anchored in the Constitution is something that make, it makes him throw up is so far out that, that maybe making jokes is the only thing that, that's left to you. And there's another point. I have seen in, in the last years I have also criticized in this particular way by ridiculing our, our Dutch right-wing movement I've seen that it's completely uh, 
useless to take them serious. Because um, what, what does it help to take them serious? It, it, any discussion with these people, any discussion with the right-wing Republicans is useless. Because they live, as I said, in a kind of bubble. You cannot reach them. You cannot reach them with simple facts. That is because their whole view of the world and their whole view of politics and their whole energy which brings them into politics has nothing to do, as I said, with a coherent view of the world, but has to do with a a strange, amorphous anger and resentment at, at the world, which they, it's, it's simply useless. And what would it, what would it bring to take Rick Santorum serious or Sarah Palin? They are, I'm sorry to say so, completely ridiculous persons. They are. Geert Wilders is a great political tactician, but he's a complete fool if he believes the foolish things that he said. But there is some truth, at least you could say to a certain extent, that uh, in terms of immigration, all of the Mexicans come to America um, kind of defying the national character of what is America. Uh -huh. It's important to know that the less smart people, this is, this is the top 5% of the world. So the fact that we live in democracy, and democracy is not the smartest people, but the people. And the fact is that most people in the world are not smart. So yeah, I feel completely, yeah. You have a good point there. <laughs> no, we are not to take them seriously, because taking them seriously makes them even more dangerous than they actually are. That's, that's the great objection that I have when it comes to the Dutch political situation. Because they took Gekkegeerd seriously. And see, what, and see what happened to us. He infuses in a way his stupid ideas about society and immigrants and, and, and Islam and so forth and so on are kind of growing like a, like a, what is a schimmel in a Engels are growing like a fungus over Dutch society. We have to object to these kind of foolish opinions. And the best way to object is to ridicule them and not take them serious. Don't take them serious. The same goes for, for, for mad people. Have you ever? Maybe not, but I had a very good friend who in a way became mad. And he had the strangest ideas about the world. And in the beginning I thought, well, I wanted to help him and, and discuss things with him. So I went with his strange things, ideas about the world. And he was kind of happy that I did so, because it, it, it made him feel stronger in his strange and, and mad cat views, actually. So no, we should not take these people uh, serious. And again, what, what I think is has been wrong in the Netherlands, we should have a, a policy of, of polarization, of, of strong objection against lunacy. If we, cannot, we cannot say, well, uh, you had this wonderful point by saying, most people are not smart. Let's, let's reformulate it, most people are amazingly stupid. <laughs> That's, that's it. That's it. Should we therefore, in a way, 